Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. Thanks for joining us. Kicking off tonight, today the president made a threat, but his threat was really an admission that his whole big government program has failed. We'll tell you how in a second, but first, the president's threat. I cannot guarantee that those checks go out on August 3rd if we haven't resolved this issue, because there may simply not be the money in the coffers to do it. Now, this was meant as a threat to Republicans, but it is really an admission that Social Security is a failure. Politicians like Harry Reid will tell you that Social Security is just fine. Social Security is a program that works and it's going to be, it's fully funded for the next 40 years. Social Security is fine. Well, we're not politicians. Social Security is not fine. If it was fine, it would have your money locked up in savings accounts as it's supposed to. Instead, it has become a grab bag for politicians and bureaucrats who take from it as they please and spend on it what they like, and then they leave bills in our lockbox. That's why the money isn't there. And that's why they want to raise the debt ceiling more to keep this kind of pyramid scheme going just a little bit longer. So how do we stop the scheming once and for all? One guy who has been working a lot for the past couple of decades on Social Security issues is our next guest. Peter Ferrara is author of America's Ticking Bankruptcy Bomb, and he joins us now. Peter, great to see you again. Thanks Glad to be here. here. All right. First of all, what do you make of the president's threat? Well, uh, to me, it's an impeachable offense because he's supposed to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. I published the article, the data in articles at Forbes recently and at Fox News, in fact, showing that we have the revenues to people continue to pay the payroll tax revenues, whether the debt limit is raised or not. And aren't Social Security bonds supposed to be at least as sacred as the as the money that we owe the Germans or the Chinese? Yes, that's right, except for the, those bonds really are just internal IOUs. That's what I've been writing about for years. Those bonds actually are worthless, and so uh, they're not going to help people to, to, to pay those benefits. But, but the point is the president, well, the, the whole bureau, the bureaucracy, the government of the United States has to put its full faith and credit behind paying off Social Security recipients. So if we're paying off the Chinese who hold our bonds, we have to also pay off Social Security recipients. See, the point is the payroll tax revenues can continue to come in, and all, all other tax tax revenues continue to come in. And I published the, the numbers uh, at these other so sites, which showed that there's more than enough money to continue to pay the Social Security benefits. Isn't it ironic that they said for years that President Reagan, if he was elected, was going to cut off your Social Security, and now it's President Obama well, who's threatening to the, cut off you your Social Security. You used the word impeachable. Why would it be an impeachable offense because to say what he to, said? he's supposed to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. So if he has the revenues, he's supposed to pay the Social Security benefits. He's just using it's as this, simple as that. He's using this as a scare tactic to try to get his way to raise taxes, just like he threatened to cut off the pay to soldiers when we had the government shut down in the spring. It was another scare tactic. But if it is a tactic, it's transparent. I yes. mean, the law is the law. The law says you have to treat these Social Security bonds the way you do with foreign bonds. Well, that's that's why, you know, he needs to be held accountable, not just by... by well, he is being held accountable yeah, by scoreboard is, and you tonight. He is being tonight. held accountable right here. So they, need long, they do need long-term fundamental reforms for, to make Social Security work for working like people of the run. Well, the best solution would be to give working people the choice of a, a personal savings and investment insurance account where they would have the freedom to, take, to choose to take at least part of uh, the money that they would otherwise pay into Social Security and save and invest it in their personal accounts like they did 30 years ago in the South American nation of Chile, where, in fact, they were, at, they were even paying in half as much over their entire careers are enjoying more than twice the benefits that were promised uh, by the old system. And the same thing would result today because if you have real savings and investment going into the system over your entire life, you earn much higher returns right. than Social Security even promises, let alone what it could pay. Well, the point is here that Social Security, like all all the big government programs. Again, I'm not a politician. I'm not running for anything. So I don't I don't have to stand up for Social Security the way some politicians do without criticizing. It needs a lot of criticism because it is broken. The way politicians have reached into a supposed lockbox to take money and throw back these worthless IOUs into that lockbox is disgraceful. That undermines the viability of Social Security. Well, yes, it does, because what has happened over the years is instead of saving and investing that money, they, there is no investment anywhere in Social Security. Ninety percent of the money that came in was always immediately paid out to current benefits and not saved at all. But even the surplus, when there was a surplus, they didn't save it. They gave it to the federal government in return for these IOUs that they have now, and that money was spent as well. So there's never any investment made. Whereas if you contrast that with a system where you actually save and invest over an entire lifetime, that will be able to pay much higher benefits uh, over a lifetime. And that's why that system is much better. And again, better. it just says something 
something about these big government programs. When you're spending other people's money, you don't account for that money as well as you do when you have some kind of personal thing at stake. My book explains how to accomplish this, and the, we, a bill was introduced, in fact, that I helped uh, Congressman Paul Ryan develop that was scored by the chief actor of Social Security as achieving, uh, eliminating all Social Security de deficits, achieving full sovereignty for Social Security without cutting benefits or raising taxes. Right, that's well, still on his website. What Alan Combs, I'm sure, will tell you in just a minute when he comes on. You don't is, need me. You just tell what I'm going is, to say. Is the, is the fact that this is just a form of privatization, and if we had had all our money wrapped up in the stock market over the past three or four years, we would have been killed. It's a form of relying on savings and investment instead of just tax and redistribution. I published an article in the Wall Street Journal, co-authored with Bill Shipman, which showed that, uh, took on this argument, well, if we had saved and invested, we would have lost all our money in the financial crisis. And it used an example of an average income couple who start doing this personal account in 1965, who retire right at the end of the financial crisis. How would they have done? It shows that if, even if they had invested all their money in the stock market, they would have retired still with $850,000. That would have been enough to pay them 75% more than Social Security even promises. Now, we're talking about accountability here and how government programs are not accountable because of the fact there's so many bureaucrats in the middle between the money that's spent and the money that comes in. You think of all the, the new big government programs we have under Obama. We have this new uh, financial consumer protection agency that Liz Warren is going to hold and uh, the chair of. And she actually is responsible, personally responsible for her own budget. Congress can't even interfere with her laying out her own budget. So you have that. You have, of course, the whole health care bill, which is huge in its implications of non-accountability bureaucracies. Are we going to have a lot more systems that don't work the way Social Security doesn't? Well, yes. In fact, uh, the book discusses the, this record that Obama has already increased federal spending by 28 percent since he was elected. And he proposes a, a budget in February for 2012 that would increase federal spending by another 57 percent on top of that by 2021. We have an entitlement crisis already. And what is the first thing he does is adopt a whole new entitlement with Obamacare. And so that is why the book's called America's Ticking Bankruptcy Bomb, because at this point we've lit the fuse to end up where Greece is. Peter Farrar, stay with us.